Hello everyone, my name is Matthew David, and in this video I'm going to be demonstrating how to exploit the Active Directory Certificate Services vulnerability via NTLM RelayX only using a single Cobalt Strike beacon. So right now you can see I'm logged into a Kali Linux virtual machine and I'm reading an article written by Rasta Mouse titled NTLM Relaying via Cobalt Strike. And this video is essentially just going to serve as a demo of what's covered in this article. As you can see here, we're going to be using Port Vendor through a SOX proxy in order to receive our data with NTLM Relay X. So you can see now I'm looking at my Cobalt Strike uh, session, and you can see that I have a packed beacon being uploaded and hosted on the team server. And I also have the spool sample.exe executable being hosted that we can pull down and use to course authentication. And you can also see right here that I am checking for updates on the domain controller to ensure that it's fully up to date, which it is. And I'm doing the same thing for our certificate services server. And it is also up to date. And then we're also going to check for updates on our Windows 10 PC that we'll be running our beacon on. And we can see that it's up to date and we can see that the protection updates are also up to date. Then we can confirm that real-time protection is turned on. Cloud deliver protection is also turned on. Only thing that's turned off is automatic sample submission. And if we go to exclusions, we can see that there are no exclusions. So now that we've confirmed that Windows Defender is enabled and that everything is up to date, we can start a PowerShell console as administrator. And we can do this because we are a local admin on the Windows 10 PC but we can then check what user we're actually running as and then see what permissions that user has on the domain and as you can see we are only a domain user and nothing else so we shouldn't have access to any other computer other than the one we're currently on so first thing we're going to do is download our cobalt strike beacon as you can see we're just going to save it to our home directory and there it is, it looked like it saved with no issue, cs.exe, and then we can attempt to run it. And it looked like it executed successfully. We can confirm that by going back to our Cobalt Strike session and interacting with our new beacon and seeing if our commands work, which it looked like they did. So that's good, we've confirmed that our beacon is fully functional. So now that we have our beacon set up, we can start the process of trying to run port vendor on the machine. First thing we're going to do is CD into the Windows System 32 drivers folder. And the next thing we're going to do is create a exclusion path for that folder so that uh, anything we put in it won't be detected by Defender. And we're doing this because in order to use port vendor, you need to upload a custom driver onto the system. And this driver will be detected by Defender by default. So this is just the easiest way I thought of doing this. If anyone knows a better way to make a driver um, undetectable but still work, please leave it in the comments below. I think that'd be very interesting. And then also you can see I'm just downloading our beacon into that folder as well so that we can run port vendor without it being detected. So right now I'm gonna execute our beacon in the exclusion folder. And as you can see, we get a new uh, beacon that we can interact with. And this is the one running in the uh, folder that has the exclusion. And as you can see, it seems to be working fine with no issue. So from here, we can start our SOX proxy that we're gonna be using to tunnel our traffic through. And then we're going to uh, forward that um, service from our team server to our local Kali Linux virtual machine so that we can use NTLM RelayX from our virtual machine instead of needing to use it on the team server. And here you can see our NTLM RelayX command. We're using proxy chains, so we send it through the tunnel. This is the IP address of our certificate services server with the web enrollment path. And then we're also giving it the domain controller for the template. And as you can see, that looked like it worked with no issue. And if we go back to Cobalt Strike, we can now set up the port forwarding that will send any connections on port 8445 to our Linux virtual machine on 445 so that NTLM RelayX can pick it up. Then we're gonna use port vendor 
to redirect all of the requests on the local machine from port 445 to port 8445 so that our, our uh, port forwarding can catch it and send it to our Linux virtual machine. And then here you can see we're downloading spool sample to the system. Not sure why I did it this way instead of just uploading it with Cobalt Strike, but whatever works. And here you can see we are going to run spool sample, first giving it the IP address of the domain controller and then giving it the IP address of our Linux virtual machine. And if we go to our terminal, we can see that it looked like something happened. And if we wait a few seconds, we can see that we get a base64 encoded certificate. And we can confirm that it is indeed for the virtual domain controller. So that showed that we were able to get the certificate using port vendor and Cobalt Strike. So now that we have the certificate, we want to set up what we need in order to pass a ticket and get domain administrator access. So here you can say we're using VOFNet and initializing it. And that looked like it worked with no issue. And now we're using a custom AMZ and ETW bypass that was made from the publicly available Sharp Unhooker project on GitHub. And you can see that that loaded with no issue. And we're going to execute that bypass and see that AMZ was patched and ETW was also patched. And next we're just going to load Rubius. And that looked like it succeeded with no issue. And now we're going to run Rubius and give it the AskTGT parameter with the domain controller for the user and the PTT flag to pass the ticket. And for the certificate parameter, we're just going to go back to our terminal and copy out the certificate that we got uh, in the last step. And then we're going to paste it in the certificate field like so. And now we should be able to just click enter. And we can see that Rubius ran without any issue and that the TGT request was successful. And we can also see that the ticket was successfully imported. So we now should have domain administrator access to the entire network. And if we can use Mimikatz to test that and dump all the hashes for every single user on the domain. And as you can see, that looked like it worked with no issue. We got the KRB TGT, which can be used for a golden ticket. And we also got everyone else's hash. We can even go back to our Windows 10 PC and see that everything is still enabled and nothing was detected by Defender. So I hope you all enjoyed the video. Please stay tuned for more content and I'll catch you on the next time. Thanks.